Systems to take a closer look at their new Hertie unmanned air vehicle system. Uh, I'm with Peter Findlay here. Uh, Peter, you described the Hertie as an autonomous system. In what sense is it autonomous? When we talk about autonomous, what we mean is that the, the aircraft has uh, much more intelligence, both in the terms of the, the air vehicle itself and also the sensor systems on board as well. So the aircraft is able to think a lot more for itself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you take the man out of the loop a lot, uh, as, uh, completely, mm -hmm. but the aircraft is able to be given a task and to go away and be trusted to carry out that task on its own, basically. Right, well that's interesting. Now, in order to complete those tasks, what sort of systems have you fitted here? Perhaps you could just point out some aspects of, 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 of what it carries. Okay, the, the aircraft as it's, uh, at the moment is carrying a, a sensor payload, which it consists of uh, normal digital stills cameras at the moment. Um, so on this particular aircraft we have uh, a fixed camera in the side here. This is one of the one the same on the other side. Um, as part of this, the, the autonomous mission for the aircraft, for the system, the aircraft will take images using this picture, process those and store them on board. If it finds a point of interest, a potential target that, you, that it thinks may be of interest, it will then steer the camera in the turret under there and take a close-up image of that. And that information is then passed back down to the operator in the ground station to, to pursue further. Right. So it's, it's doing all of that itself. It's, yes, that's It's right. operating the camera itself. So where's the brain then? Where, where, where's all the processing capability? Here? All the processing sits inside here. A number right. of black boxes um, yes. in there doing all the clever work inside right. the aircraft. OK. Now, I know this aircraft is, it has had some service with the RAF in Afghanistan. We can't obviously talk about that in detail. But broadly speaking, what sort of roles do you have in mind for this Hurti? The aircraft is basically, the strength of the aircraft is the amount of time it can stay on station. So therefore, um, anything that requires the aircraft to stay on station and to uh, look at various areas, whether it be with stills imagery or whether it be with video imagery as well, because we can obviously fit different sorts of uh, sensor payloads on, on here. So as well as the, the traditional military roles, both in terms of uh, more strategic and tactical uh, work with video or stills imagery, obviously there is interest from uh, police forces and other civil agencies, Coast Guard, fisheries protection and so on. And we've been uh, engaged with a number of potentially uh, potential customers there to talk about their interest in that area as well. So is it fair to say that it's a, it's, it's a flexible surveillance and reconnaissance platform? Very right? much so, yes. Good, OK. Well, one key feature of this is very obvious. There's no pilot on board this aircraft, so we need to find out how this actually flies. And we're going to move around to the ground station that BAE has developed for this, and we'll try okay. and understand what keeps this in the air. Uh, I presume this is where the aircraft is operated from, but how does that work in practice? Basically, what we're seeing here is we're seeing three components of the ground station. Um, on the left-hand side, we see um, a mission manager, which is the way the mission is initially planned for the, for the aircraft. Uh, the middle area shows the flight vehicle controller, which is the interface with the actual aircraft. Um, it shows all the, the typical sorts of things you would expect to see on an aircraft uh, instrument, con instrument control panel. Um, that's there to monitor the systems to make sure that everything's going to plan. On the right hand side, we see the um, image processing and image analysis um, side of the, of the system. And that really is the core of the whole system. So, uh, so essentially what we're seeing here is the capability to actually fly and operate the aircraft, but also the output, if you like, the, the information that it's bringing back. Very much so. This is, for, for demonstration purposes, we have, we've left all three stations up, mm -hmm. and they're almost showing things to the same level. Mm -hmm. uh, very much during the, during the mission itself, mm -hmm. the, the focus is very much on the, the, the right-hand side, the image extraction, the image analysis side. That's interesting. And is this pretty typical? Would there be two controllers generally? Typically, at the moment, we would we'd be thinking about running with two controllers. Um, one we still does need to manage the aircraft and manage the actual mission. Although the way that we, we operate the aircraft, the aircraft will be given a task to do, much the same way as you'd give a task to a manned aircraft. Um, but just as with a manned aircraft, once the pilot has gone off to do that task, he is still being monitored and being, if you like, controlled at a higher level from the uh, from back at the back at the command center. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the role that the, the, that our UAV operator has in this in this setup. So if I've understood you right, these controllers essentially form a team with the uh, you know with the with the Very brains on board so, yeah. the aircraft. Yes. It's not uh, strictly speaking a case of one controlling the other. They're working together 
That's right, yes. In fact, in, in many ways, it's almost transparent to the, to the end user, whether or not it's a, it's a manned aircraft or an unmanned system at the right. other end. Right, that's excellent. Well, for BAE, the Hertie system is what they hope will be the beginning of a, of a broader family of UAVs. Uh, but back, uh, back in the UK, they're developing potential new models that could have much more extensive roles, and we hope to learn more about that at future shows. For AIN TV, I'm Charles Alcott.